but to give you an idea of why it took so long, I said we just never were going to compromise on the protection. Hey, what's going on everybody? Aunt Pruitt here. Hope you're doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. At this year's CES, I was able to sit down and talk about privacy protection. I sat with my man Mike Fong at Prevoro. What is Prevoro? Provoro is a privacy company. They are worried about your privacy and how can they protect it for you? How can we take everything that you care about and lock it down from all of the prying eyes of the internet and all of the airwaves? I sat with them and had a very, very nice in-depth conversation with them. I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. Yeah, a lot of tie-ins there. So we have mobile protection as well as just desktop, desktop protection, yeah. even laptops, anything like that Down, as well? The, absolutely. On the roadmap, the plan is uh, laptops, desktops, uh, Internet of Things, uh, automotive. The, the, the goal is, in the reality is you can sort of see our, our mission and vision, our mission and vision, but right. you know, the, I feel like privacy is a basic human right. People should be able to self-determine when yep. they're being tracked and monitored. And right now, you can see at the keynote at CES, I mean, the, the Intel CEO came out, sensors everywhere, everywhere you go, everything yep. you do, track, monitor. I mean, for me, there's a really creepy element to that. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, people should be able to control this, so get the benefits of the technology, none of the downsides. All right. And I said, I'm gonna start a company that's gonna help people do that. And so we had to pick a place to start. Right. And smartphones, there's a great quote, uh, Smartphones are ground zero. So if you own a smartphone, you're under surveillance. And Constantly. So, yeah. So I said, we're going to start with smartphones, uh, develop all the core technologies that allow people to protect themselves. And then once we got that, we said, now we can take these core technologies, these audio jamming technologies, these RF protection technologies, mm -hmm. and import them to other platforms. And so the first one we ported to was a desktop, just to even show people, look, this is, before it's much bigger than that. This isn't a case. This is a right. consumer electronic device. There's there's boards, there's microcontrollers, there's soft power, there's a lot of stuff. all kinds of sophisticated technology inside this product. Um, but we can take it and actually make it work in other platforms. You know, it, it's sad where we are in today's age about privacy not necessarily being looked at as a human right. Yeah. You know, it, it's... Even my CES oh, badge, yeah. you know, it, it has my where I'm from and so forth. But I can remember in previous CES uh, shows they had NFC tags, and I they think still they still do. do they yeah. track you everywhere you go in the show. They know where you stop, <laughs> what booth you, what your traffic pattern is. There's over, I think, is it over four million beacons out there in retail stores tracked everywhere every if you stop at women's lingerie if you go to right. the sporting department you stop at the gun uh you know the store they, they know there but i do like the idea that my phone knew that i was going to be here in las vegas mm -hmm. on such and such day yeah and it even told me you know what you need to leave if you're going to be here to talk to you on yeah. time yeah. you know I, I do appreciate stuff like that but Again, I guess we have to figure out where we're we going to draw the line yeah. when it comes to privacy, and, and where do you all draw the line? So, uh, our where we try to draw the line is really no compromise. So, you get all the benefits when you want them. So, if you want your phone to be able to give you a reminder uh, about doing something, if you want to have it know that you're in a specific location, of course, we want to make that enabled and mm -hmm. possible. But if there's ever a time when you want to say, "I don't want my phone to know where I am." Uh, so I'm going to my church, I'm going to my doctor, I'm going right. to a Democratic rally or a Republican rally, right. you're, what your, you know, an abortion clinic, yep. you know, whatever your belief is, right? right? There's all somebody who has a different belief. Right. And that information can be misconstrued or used against you. And the other thing that's happening is that it's costing people money and they don't know about it. Insurance companies are, you know, there was a big article in the New York Times that are starting to track your location everywhere you go. Yep. And if you drive more on city streets versus, or surface streets versus highways, that means you're more likely to get in an accident. That's you true. go through bad areas. That's true. You know, wait a minute, I'm just, you know, and how, and the, the issue for me is, they didn't ask permission to nope. do that. I'm just trying to go to work so I can pay <laughs> your exactly. premiums. You exactly. Know? So why are you going to charge me more? And then you see a yellow light. And maybe you have to speed to get through it because that's safer because there's a guy tailgating you mm -hmm. as opposed to slamming on the brakes. And then you get dinged right. and, and you have no, no chance 
to be aware that this is going on, mm -hmm. to see the database uh, that's being built on you and, and say what it's telling about you and be able to say, hey, that's not right, let me correct it. And this is affecting people, it can affect people's job applications, yep. it can affect uh, the bank, the, way, the rates that people charge you for loans or if you get a loan, because, and people have no idea all this information. It's so sad, it's yeah. so sad. Now, you guys are trying to combat those types of practices. Have you been getting any type of pushback or negative feedback from those big companies that you know that said, "Hey, you're a threat to us"? You know, because that that's yeah. that's out there. I don't care what your product is. There's going to be the quote unquote competition that says, "You know what? We need to stop them from sure. doing that." You know, have you yeah. all been attacked any kind of way? So. Uh, one of the reasons we, we've been in stealth mode for two and a half years okay. uh, and developing all the core technology and nice. we did not reveal our company until Monday, uh, Tuesday night. Awesome. So we literally, the first, we, I didn't want anybody to say stop the development, yep. get in front, we got a stack of patents this high. So right. I basically said let's develop the technology and announce it to the world so that it gets out there before anybody can come and say hey let's try to stop this before while it's in infancy. That we're more, more mature, we're, we're in manufacturing, we're yes. getting ready to ship products. So now if people want to... That's you know, the standard a problem, practice. We're a little bit further ahead. That's <laughs> the standard practice. They get you right before you get off the ground, you yeah. know, to try to just shut you down. Yeah. There's this very common uh, thing that people say. They say, well, I got nothing to hide. And, okay. and, or, or people say, they say, in the government says, if you've got nothing to hide, you shouldn't worry about the fact that we're tracking you. <laughs> and I get asked that a lot. And I said, that is the most incredibly narrow-minded, self-serving uh, sort of framing of the issue. It's like if privacy is an ocean, it's like taking one drop and saying, no, no, privacy is only about hiding something bad. No, no, it's not. Right. There's, privacy is about, would you let someone take a camera and you know, follow you in your bedroom, in your bathroom all day right. and be able to publish it anytime you want? Would you let them look at, like you said, your credit card information, your bank information, all your passwords? You have nothing to hide but lots to protect. Right. And then I'm gathering your location, your movement data. Well, now I'm gathering all of your credit card details and store loyalty card purchase data. And now I'm gathering everything you say uh, audibly. <laughs> okay. That's what gets built to be a profile that, you know, you run the risk of, one, it misrepresents who you are and people draw wrong conclusions that affects you financially or otherwise. In the right. worst case, it could affect your freedom right. because people could say, hey, you were looking up pressure cookers, uh, you Google that, your neighbor uh, rented a rider truck and you just bought some fertilizer for your yard. So all of a sudden you're on a no-fly list or something crazy, you know, and, and you're like, wait, I didn't get a chance. Why am I affected? So the, the, all I wanted was a roast. Yeah, exactly. I just wanted a roast and I want my plants to grow, right? So people say, well, Mike, if you got nothing to hide, why would you ever use this product? No, no, you got lots to protect. You do have a lot of things to protect. Exactly. You know, it's not necessarily just trying to hide it out from everybody as if it's nefarious, but it's it's your own yeah, data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so that's it's spot on. So I think. The great news is the reception has been really positive. Mm -hmm. People would like to have an option. I, that's why I want to give this, you know what? There's people who care and there's people who don't care, right? That's fine, if you don't care, no worries. If, if, you, uh, if you do care, then you have to just, you base, and there's, oh, by the, way, by the way, there's another level, which is there are people who are aware and they're unaware, right? So yeah. people who are aware, care or don't care. The, our job is to say that for the people who care, you have an option now to right. control what information you share and when. Right. Uh, and then for the people who are unaware, our job is to educate them, let them know that this tracking is going on and it may be affecting you and now you can make your choice. You can right. choose to care or you can choose not to care. And so, you know, we're not, we know this isn't for everybody, but for the people who do care about their privacy, then you, know, you have an option now. Huh. Here's another dimension to the problem that, again, people don't think about. Uh, there's individuals and there's corporations and governments. Oh yeah. Uh, corporations and governments, there's a great, great quote by, uh, I think we have it on here somewhere. Uh, we're in the middle of the greatest transfer of wealth in human history, and that's from, who is it? Michael Hayden, Michael former Hayden. head of the NSA. So he's, he's a basis to know. The premise that we built our products around was that you really can't keep people out of your electronic devices. Like the sophisticated hacker, that's one category of problem. Right. The second is most people never read the terms and conditions. They just they accept don't. And they give access to everything. They don't. Right? You know, I've, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I've read a few EULAs, yeah. but not all of them. Yeah. And I've only read a few just because I was curious to see what the language was. And a lot of times the language is so lawyered up. Yeah. The regular average person they wouldn't care, yeah. they wouldn't understand what's being said. So if people can 
hear what you say. So, so our view is like the, what you say is the gold mine. So from a corporate and government perspective, uh, long before anything is reduced to writing, mm -hmm. important it's discussed. So your your M and A strategy, yep. your trading strategy, your board discussions, whatever. Yep. And so that's why governments spend enormous amounts of money and risk relationships with allies. You know, we record the president of Germany and France and Brazil mm -hmm. for the what maybe one percent of the time that they're on the phone. All right. What would you do if you could record the other ninety nine percent? of their conversations and people carry around these incredibly sensitive microphones yep. and that's why the CIA and the NSA and defense, certain defense contractors don't allow phones in their buildings, right. let alone their meetings, because they know how easy it is mm -hmm. to turn into to basically recording devices. Yep. How does the, the, the privacy guard work from you know, just an everyday man standpoint. Okay, yeah. so everyday man perspective, it's it looks like a case. You put yep. this case around your phone. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, there's multiple microcontrollers, circuit boards, all kinds of audio jamming technologies that are very sophisticated built in here. Mm -hmm. And so basically, 99% of the time, you are uh, just having your phone in a case like this. You right. preserve the Apple experience, really important, so you get native button access, none of these ugly transfer buttons that are a pain to press through, right? <laughs> yeah. And so it, there's a lot of time and money spent on industrial design on this. Right. And so you basically, this is great, you get to use this phone all the time just like you would, but while this is happening, the light's on, we have a separate, independent, true random noise audio jammer for every single mic on the phone. This mic, the back mic, the bottom mic, and then the 6S, they add a fourth microphone. Four microphones on this thing. We jam every one of them. We cover both cameras. So you can literally bring this into your board meeting, use it as an alarm clock by your bed at night, and not worry about Facebook and right. listening to your conversation with your partner or whatever. Right. And uh, and you're, you're great. You want to take a picture, you want to you get a phone call, you pop it up, pop the hood up. Oh, you basically that. have a sensor in here that detects if the hood's up or down and if the phone is in the case. It automatically turns off the jamming. Look at that. You uncover both cameras, smile, so let's take a selfie, right? <laughs> and then, or I say, all right, hey, Ant, you're running 10 minutes late, great, I'll see you in 10 minutes. Right. As soon as you're done, boom, you close Look it, that. comes back on, everything's jammed again. Mm -hmm. It's like the safety on a gun. Right now, these sensors record all the time and you can't control it. You only take the safety off when you want to shoot. A gun's dangerous. You only let these sensors, cameras, mics, record when you want to. Hey, Siri, where's the nearest movie theater? get the answer. Right. It doesn't listen any other time. You nice. know? So it, it's that simple. And then the next piece of the puzzle is when you don't want to show up, when you want to show up as sort of as a dot on the map as opposed to, you know, continuously track. So right. I, you know, we believe you know, people shouldn't be distracted driving anyway. It's dangerous. So when you get in your car, you put this cover on, okay? The cover just slides right over the top, okay? okay. There, it creates a Faraday cage. You can see this, this gold, solid gold plated yeah. finger stock here. This is palladium, uh, a palladium blend. And I'll tell you about why these metals, this is why it's expensive, um, one of many reasons. But it creates a Faraday cage that creates a minimum 110 decibel of RF attenuation, which is 100 billion X reduction of RF energy. So you can be under a cell tower or next to a Wi Fi hotspot and be invisible. You now can drive wherever you want. Right. You, you don't, no one can track everywhere you go, how fast you drive. Right. You get to your destination, pop the cover off, do I have any messages to return or calls, I take my phone with me. Or if you've gone somewhere that you don't want people to know about, like, hey, I, you know, I went to a bar at lunch, oh my gosh, my, my, a lot of employers track employees. Right. It could be misinterpreted. Right. Um, oh, I went to uh, my Alcoholics Anonymous meeting or something, right. you know, who knows? You know, people have, have lives outside of work or whatever. The insurance companies don't need to know, and not everybody needs to know. The marketers don't need to know. Right. So then, if that's the case, leave the cover on, and when you're at a place that you are okay with, then take the cover off, and you use your phone as normal. So if you're going through the Russian airport, the Chinese airport, uh, there's a risk that you could be hacked before you leave the airport, even if your phone's off. Okay, cell right. receptors, everything else. With this, we've had a lot of some interest from the big corporations. Hey, we'll give this to our international travelers. You put this on the cover. You know, when you're on the plane, when you land, you go through the choke point. Uh, then, or you know, I've had one CEO of a defense company tell me, Mike, this is great. When I go to Asia, I don't just go to Beijing, I go to Japan, right. I come back through Manila. And so I want to have my personal phone with me. It's frustrating, I can't bring it, but I understand our corporate policy. Right. I'll take your case, I'll put this on, uh, and when I land in, you know, up in San Francisco, when I leave, I'll put it on, or maybe just before I land go through the airport, keep it on the whole time and I'm in China. Right. When I get to uh, Narita Airport in Tokyo, I'll pop it off, I got my personal cell phone with me. Three days. So you can see, it's a little bit, so it's real, so it's even simpler to put on some of the other cases. It's literally, you just 
uh, put it here and you slide it in. Uh, and it goes and right then, into the lightning yeah, connector and everything. Exactly, and you can see it's a, bit, a little bit heavier than the phone itself. Um, this is a beta, uh, right? So the, the, the tolerances with beta parts aren't quite as tight as our final manufacturing. So um, uh, of course. it's a little tighter fit you know, now, but, uh, and then it just goes up and down like that. You can sort of push it up and down. And yeah, and that's secure. That's not all yeah. flimsy either. Right, exactly. Very nice. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I've been carrying this around for six weeks. I love it. I love. I actually feel naked when I when my phone's out of the case. Like if the engineering team is doing something with it, I'm like, God, I hate just having my phone by itself. <laughs> you actually get used to. It. There's a peace of mind. It is of knowing I can that see you that. control all the sensors around I your just device. Pop this up. We let you see each mic and see what you can see our jamming signal on every single mic. Wow. You can actually test it. So now that's great. But but uh, to show you the level of thought that went into this, we know your phone can be hacked. Right. So what happens if someone says? Uh, I hacked your phone, trivially easy, right? Or, you know, pretty easy, uh, and spoofed your app. So you think you're protected, but you're not. So I said, okay, let's do this. Let's do a two-factor authentication. What you have and what you know. What you have is the phone and the app. What you know is this password. Well, what password do you have? Well, I can just sit there and say, start recording. Hey, what's up, Ant? Uh, checking the front mic. Now go to the bottom mic. I'm gonna put this down. Uh, you can see it's jammed. No, jamming. You can yeah. put it up. Okay, stop recording. Let's just say that as a name. You can play it back. Okay. Start recording. Hey, what's up, man? Checking the front mic. Now, bottom mic. <laughs> so we said uh, this is an important issue, not just for consumers, but for businesses, because you have to. We believe that people have to be able to protect their sensitive information, and and that's. And, and then the other thing we said is. Uh, we need to do it in a way. The option of leave, everyone can just leave your phone at home, but nobody does it. No. They're surgically attached to people's hands. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So we said, how do we do this in a way that is easy to use, that people can carry around, but they get this unbelievable level of protection? I get it from an individual standpoint, but who are you targeting from a business and corporation standpoint? Is it SMB? Is it more on the enterprise level? Is it government? Or? So it's a combination. Okay. Um, so uh, companies with high levels of intellectual property or sensitive information that either they need to protect or they're mandated to protect are sort of the initial sort of target zone mm -hmm. and the sweet spot. Right. Uh, financial services companies, pharmaceutical companies, uh, defense right. companies, uh, you know, high tech IP, uh, lawyers, Doctors, right. with HIPAA requirements, or safe for patient information. Right. See, that's that's some of the stuff that it was that was popping in my head. Okay, let's say you go to an enterprise; they have to deal with SOTS compliance yep. and HIPAA compliance, yep. and this falls along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. So there, in fact, one of the things we're doing uh, in the next gen of our mobile app is actually help with compliance. So that can we set up repeating, recurring, automated? tests of the protection. So sample the mics and make sure they're being jammed once a day, once a week. You, know, you select right. the frequency and email a report to a central compliance department. Nice. In order to protect the corporation, you have to protect the consumer. So before, and you've been in tech a long time, mm -hmm. there was a nice clean break between the corporate set of resources and the individual set of resources. Yeah. BYOD, you know, people have Samsung TVs have a recorder in your home, the Apple TV remote has a recorder. Uh, you know all these sensors nest. So the CEO gets a phone call in his home about, hey, what's the what's the cost? That, or we're going to up our bid on this big competitive thing with a international firm for commodities resources. He may be talking. You don't even have to hack the corporate firewall anymore. Right. You just kind of get in the guy's house with a known hole in his wireless access point that is yeah. a firmware issue. Right. right? And right. you get all the so corporations have to think about. Wow. Uh, that, that's the world we're moving to, and that's mm -hmm. the that's what's so exciting for I think Favoro. Right. Because we. Are the first company to actually do two things. One, uh, you know, again, having spent a lot of time in information security, the way to think about it is you've data at rest, data in motion, and environmental data.